morning and welcome to Mr. Tracy Photography. I always say good morning. I don't know if it's morning when you're watching this, but it's morning here, so good morning to you. I just recovered from COVID, and so tonight I'm excited to get back outside, take the telescope out there, and go shooting for a new target. Tonight it's going to be the Pleiades Star Cluster. Now before we get to the astronomy, I want to share with you guys what COVID was like for me. Because there's not a lot out there of people telling you what it was like. So if you get COVID, what can you experience? Well, for me, I tested on a Saturday. On Sunday, the test came back positive. So Sunday night rolls around and I have a headache. My head feels swollen. My head's pounding. Wasn't great, but I thought this isn't too bad. If this is all that COVID is, I can deal with it. Monday morning rolled around and I felt great. So I thought, cool. I didn't get very bad symptoms. I got through it. Very good. Unfortunately, by Monday night, the fever rolled in and the fever lasted for five nights. Five days and nights with the fever really stinks. It was not a lot of fun. But worse than that was three days in, I stopped being able to breathe right. I could walk just from my bed to the bathroom and I'd be out of breath and it was hard for me to catch my breath. Um, five days in, I walked up my stairs to go to bed and I couldn't breathe. I put that little pulse oximeter on my finger and the reading was 89. And at 89, you need to get to the hospital. So I started planning to go down to the hospital, but within about 15 minutes, I could breathe a little better. The pulse oximeter numbers got up to 91 and 92. Still not very good, but at least I didn't have to go to the hospital. Now, after about four days of that, not being able to breathe, I went into the hospital and they gave me what's called a monoclonal antibody infusion. And that, uh, I guess that just kind of kickstarts your immune system, the stuff that naturally fights COVID. This kind of helps that out. And within two days, I felt better. So that really was the life changer. Um, COVID does stink. It is no fun. The scariest part is the breathing. When you're not breathing right, everything gets a little bit scary. But now I'm beyond it. I'm a few days past my last any symptom whatsoever. So I'm breathing pretty good again. And I'm feeling pretty good. Tonight, we're going to go back outside. I'm going to take my telescope. I'm taking the Esprit 120 ED. And we're going to go shooting for the Pleiades Star Cluster. This was the first target that I ever targeted. Last year I took out a camera with the 300 millimeter lens on it, stuck it on a star tracker, and I got my first deep sky photo, which wasn't very good. So I'm hoping to be able to top that tonight. Now the Pleiades star cluster is one of the closest items to us in deep space. I think it's 440 light years away from us here on Earth. So not real far. I mean, the moon is closer, but other than that, there's not a lot of targets that are as close to us as the Pleiades star cluster. In fact, it's one of the few things you can see with your naked eye if you go outside, especially starting here in November. Look off to the east. The Pleiades star cluster comes up just about after su sunset here in California anyway. So it's going to be a great target. I'm going to have all night to shoot it. Come with me. We're headed to look for the Pleiades star cluster. All right, we're setting up for tonight. We're going to be taking a picture of the Pleiades star cluster. Once again, we got the Skywatcher Esprit 120 ED up here on top. I got the Canon EOS R on the back here. That's a full framed unmodified camera. This right here is the adapter that takes the EOS R and it goes to the uh, regular Canon adapters. This here is the field flattener right through here. I got my red star, my red dot finder on top right now, which I'll be replacing out for my guide scope, which is over there just waiting. What I do is I'll line it up with the uh, red dot finder first and then switch it out and get this thing hooked up with the guide scope so we can go to PhD2 for guiding. We're all set to go. Kind of give you an idea of what we're looking at tonight. Right over there above the palm tree, that's where Pleiades is going to show up. We've got the Andromeda galaxy right up here. So we're gonna go for the Pleiades star cluster, see if we can get a couple hours on that with this great telescope and see what happens. All right, tonight we are shooting the Pleiades star cluster. See if I can show you what it looks like here in the back of my, there you go. That is a one 45 second sub in the back of my camera there. I go ahead and get that off the screen so we can start shooting again. There we go. Now see if I can get back here you can't see it, but right above that tree right there is where the Pleiades star cluster is right now. We're going to shoot it for a couple hours tonight. So here we are. Got my little power station right over here like always. And I am shooting this unguided. The other day I came out here and I shot the Andromeda Galaxy unguided. And I could not believe how incredible the Panther TTS-160 tracked the stars without auto-guiding. So I am not auto-guiding. Let's see if I got a... There you go. So that's what it looks like. 
Um, auto guiding, I don't know. I just don't seem to need it for anything a minute or less. On this telescope mount, it does an incredible job of tracking. So that's what we're shooting tonight. We're shooting for Pleiades. See how it goes. You're gonna see a beeping in the sky right there, which is an airplane, which is flying directly in front of the Pleiades star cluster. That's the third airplane in the last 10 minutes. They're killing me. So I'll just have to erase all of those subs and hope that the plane stop flying through that area. We are done outside and it's time to go ahead and start processing our images. So again, I'm using Sequitor, the free software. I'm gonna quickly walk you through the process, super easy. Double click on the star images. This is gonna be your lights. These are my light images right here. Let's highlight all of those and bring them all in. These are 45 second subs. I have 239 of those. I believe it's just under three hours, right about three hours. My noise images, gonna go in there. And my noise images are my dark images. I'm gonna get those. My darks, I believe I have 20. I do. My vignetting images, those are your flats. I have 19 of those just because I was lazy and didn't wait for the last one. So I've got 239 light images. I've got 20 noise images and I've got 19 flats, which is vignetting images in this program. Then you're going to select a place to put that. So double click the output. I'll stick that. Let's just go right to the desktop on this one. Call that Pleiades. It's going to be a TIFF file and I'm ready to go. The only thing I do is I come down here to where it says Composition, Align Stars, Accumulation. I click on that. I select Select Best Pixels instead of Accumulation. And I drag all the way over to Strict. That's it. Hit Start. Good to go. It's going to take about 45 minutes to process all of this. So I'll come back to you once I've got my image. Okay, I'm here in Photoshop now and I'm going to open up my stacked image. We'll take a look at that. I'm not going to work you through the whole Photoshop process. I've done that in other videos, so everybody's already seen how that works. But here is my stacked image right here. You can actually start to see some of the nebulosity right around here and here. Once I've pulled all of that nebula out, this is reflecting nebula, so it's light being reflected off of the stars back onto the nebula. Makes for a really pretty photograph. I'm going to take you right to the end where the cool music comes in and I show you my final product.